Hello, everybody. Hope welcome to another episode of the Bodacious Rant with Burn and Rye. He just said a good, funny joke about them stuff. That's, that's you just have to be here. You had to yeah, be there. Um, but I, like I said, I hope everybody had a great weekend and your week is starting off good. Um, we got another review coming at you. I know we just dropped uh, the House of the Dragon. Uh, this one was a very is a very controversial movie just because a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes, you know, between a director, an actor, you know, the the personal lives of people kind of tainted this movie and then just, you know, stor- stuff that came out. I feel like if you guys have kept up, you know what we're talking about. And it's in the title and everything. Uh, Don't Worry, Darling, directed by Olivia Wilde, dropped this most recent weekend. And uh, Bern and I were able to snag it, along with uh, the Avatar re-release, which was definitely worth yeah, the time. Yeah, that was awesome. Like, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, it was... And you got to see a sneak peek of Avatar 2, so excited but um this is a non-spoiler review so you don't have you, you don't need to see the movie to watch this um before we get started though don't forget to give us a like uh ring the bell and uh be a, don't be afraid to subscribe as well we really appreciate the the support guys you know we love you we we want want to keep growing the community um so basically this movie takes place they didn't say really where it's it's just called um the, it's what, just called Victory. It called? Yeah, the, the Victory Project. They they don't say the name of the place, but I think it's just. But it's owned in Palm Springs. They just call it Victory, I think. Yeah, like it's basically just like a very like you know suburban nineteen fifties nineteen sixties aesthetic, um, uh, starring Harry Styles, who's now transitioning from like musician to actor, which isn't a bad thing. It's like cool, man. You, the first thing I saw him was in Dunkirk, which I need to rewatch again. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. But he was in that one. He was in the most recent Marvel movie, The Eternals. Oh, that's right. And, uh, and now he's in this. Also alongside him is Florence Pugh, who is always a goddamn gem in whatever she does. However big or small part, she she nails it every time. Um, who else is in it? A lot of, a good slew of actors, to be honest. You know, especially Gemma Chan. Olivia Wilde herself is a character in this mm-hmm. one. And Chris Pine. Um, I think... Chris Pine, he was he was another great actor. He, I mean, he never ceases to amaze me. Even this one movie I saw recently, uh, The Contractor. Did you ever, did you hear about that? I saw that trailers, one? No. but I never saw the movie. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that great. It's kind of kind of dumb. But <laughs> anyways, um, not his fault or Ben Foster's fault. It was just bad plot. But um, and the this, this just basically about this this uh, community that the women stay home. Very very much like fifties like almost more like propaganda I would say where they stay home clean cook do everything and the husbands they all venture out to this place in the middle of the desert called the victory project and it, it's a very much like a psychological thriller drama and uh, I mean I don't want to say anything more else we kind of give it away <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it at that and y- you know it just the more I thought about it afterwards, I, I just I did not like this movie. It it, it was not that great. Um, no no discredit to the actors or anything, but the plot was dumb. And then the some of the scenes that they added really made no sense to the rest of it or to the characters. So uh, I mean, I'm, what 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 did you think of it, Brian? I mean, you know, coming into it, you know, all the you know controversy surrounding the you know the the making of the movie aside. I'm, I was very excited to to check this out because I mean Olivia Wilde this is her second directorial movie you know the, her first one being Booksmart which was amazing and awesome. yeah one of the best directorial debuts in in my opinion and and one of the best uh, coming of age movies I will say so her you know, her next project whatever it was gonna be I was you know I was gonna be in line for it because that one did so well so hearing that she was gonna do a movie with Florence Pugh who's you know one of the best actors working around today. I couldn't have been more excited for this one going in. So, yeah. So, I mean, when, once, you know, the, we got done with the movie, I was just like, man, like, this felt like such a missed opportunity because all the, the pieces were there. You know, like, the, the the central mystery in the movie was intriguing from the start. You know, the the, the 1950s aesthetic that you mentioned was, was really, really well done. Uh, the cinematography, mm-hmm. 
by uh, Matthew Lee Batik. Uh, you know, he's done a bunch of uh, Darren Aronofsky movies. You know, Star is Born, Iron Man 2. You know, he's done a, done a lot of great things. And, and the cinematography here paired with the 1950s aesthetic was... It was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous movie to look at. And and well acted, too. Like you said, I mean, Florence Pugh, she never fails to, to deliver. And, and this was definitely her movie. I mean, you know, she's in pretty much every scene of the movie. And, and you know, just the, the fact that, that, that she's as talented as she is is... Is the reason why I was why I was engaged the entire way through because the plot wasn't really doing her any favors. Like it felt like the movie was stuck in Act One, like for the longest time, where it keeps setting up mysteries and like different scenarios, and you're just like, okay, but where's this going? And it it it, it just like throws it all at you at the end at the end, and you're just kind of like, ah man, it it just left me a little bit like disappointed at, at the end of it because. You know, I was, I was, like I said, I was really engaged and I was really invested. But after a while, I was just like, okay, let's let's move on already. Let's 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 get to the meat of these things. And and yeah, once once we get to to the reveal of everything, it's like ah, it, you've lost me by that point already. Yeah, I mean, I think the only besides the the plot, uh, the other disappointing thing was kind of Harry Styles. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily his fault, just because it was under it. You never want to try and blame an actor for stuff because the, in the end, it's up to their director to direct them. This is what you need to do. This is what we're trying to achieve with mm-hmm. this scene. So you need to act like this or at least try and flesh that, this, this, the tension, the, what the scene is trying to do. And there's a couple scenes in there where I thought it was very contradictory to his character for the plot. And it just, he wasn't, he was just kind of flat. It really made me, because for those of you who don't know, um, Shia LaBeouf was supposed to be Harry Styles' uh, character. But, you know, due to some complications and some rumors and stuff, he left, you know. But then everybody, but Olivia Wilde tried to say, oh, like, you know, he, uh, I fired him. But it's a whole thing. You know, you guys can read up on that on your own. That's kind of irrelevant to the movie itself. Um, but it just was like, eh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been upset if they got somebody else besides Harry Styles for Florence Pugh. Uh, I will say it was very crazy to see a lot of comedic actors in this one being very serious. Like Nick Kroll especially stood out to mm-hmm. me, very creepy character, but in, the, but he was also very fun and funny. Um, they had that one guy from, uh, WandaVision who, who is really well, well done in this one. I don't know that actor's name, but I think he's like either Indian or Middle Eastern or something like that, but he was great. It was good seeing him in this. And then also the one of the girls from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where she has mostly been funny so far, she was really well... She did a really good job in this. So I do appreciate the rest of the cast really putting in the work for this, but the plot just could not, could not do them service. So that's why I'm going to give this movie a 2 out of 5, just because, again, like you said, Burn, the cinematography, the... the uh, the whole setting and aesthetics was great, and the and the cast was solid, but just it's simply the plot that sucked. Yeah, I mean the the real issues stemmed from the script, which I feel could have you know done with a little bit of maybe like one or two more rewrites or something to really tighten it up and to to get like the momentum of the movie going because like I said, it feels like it's spinning on one wheel for the longest time. That once we get you know the other ones going, it's like okay, like it, it's already too late, you know, and and you've like you've kind of lost the the momentum and and the drive of the movie that that's really pushing this this central like mystery forward, and 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 that that is unfortunate. I mean, every like I said, all the controversy of surrounding like the making of the movie aside, I will say none of that seemed like it, it seeped into you know the movie itself, like that it, it just really like you couldn't have tell like you couldn't tell like from the you know the acting and anything that was going on in it that were there were issues you know that at least it, it, from from my perspective i've been noticing anything that couldn't have been just attributed to the writing uh, unfortunately but uh but yeah they, i mean this 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 really is a, a disappointment because i was i was very much looking forward to it and and all the talent involved i was i was expecting something to be to be pretty great you know but uh, it turns out it was just it was just okay, you know, like it wasn't, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And had it have been like a complete dumpster fire, I feel like that would have been a little bit more entertaining, you know, <laughs> so we can look back at this and, in, in sort of like a, like a Joss Whedon, like Justice League theatrical cut type thing where we hear these things that went down on, you know, on the set and we see the finished product and you can like tell from the get go that 
the, everything just went wrong and it's kind of like fun in that sort of like you know <laughs> like messed up masochistic type of way but you know that that's not the case here the movie just kind of falls flat and and that is unfortunate but uh if anyone was gonna watch it you know go watch it for florence Pugh because uh, as always she she kills it but her and you know like the great set design and the cinematography are not enough to get this movie over a two out of five for me also yeah it's it's just it's just sort of meh and and that's that's kind of worse you know yeah it's it's like polar it's either the opposite side of the spectrums work where it's either really great or really bad because in the bad you can find some funny stuff on it mm-hmm. but i mean the last thing i will say is that it didn't some of the scary stuff that happened in it didn't really need to happen it didn't make it kind of just made the plot way more confusing than what it was what it really was so um, but like Burns said, if you're a genuine fan of Florence Pugh, maybe Harry Styles and some of the other cast, go see it. You know, and by no means you're still gonna get a visual, uh, vis- you're gonna be visually entertained for mm-hmm. sure. But uh, no, don't. I just trying to go into a clear head. And if, and for those of you who saw it this last weekend, if you liked it, great. Let us know in the comments what did you like about it or why did you like it. Uh, for those of you who agree with us, you know, don't be afraid to chime in as well. Just to you know, just get the ball rolling, keep the conversation going. But um, uh, is that all, Burn? Should, should we did, uh, did we cover everything, or is there anything you want to also get off your chest? I mean, I mean, yeah, the the movie has a lot of great ideas, and I'm I'm kind of wary to like mention them because I don't want to to like you know ruin people's experiences because I feel like if I if I say the sort of like themes that the movie touches on, then you know people will kind of go in and, and and sort of pick be able to pick the movie apart so yeah i as in a non-spoiler thing i really can't say but there's a lot of like a uh you know gender commentary i will say that that's that goes on here and i felt that it was very interesting but uh again just let uh, all that great stuff that they could have you know talked about and commented on was let down by the script also so but that's all i'll say about that because i don't want to i don't want to give anything too much away yeah not only gender commentary but like uh almost period commentary like time like that yes. that that generate that generation of the 60s and 50s and they, basically anything with between world war Two and and the cold war it had a lot of commentary on that too or a little a decent amount but um until next time guys we got a couple we got you know more she hulk coming at you more andor more rings of power house of dragon and smile comes out this weekend which i hope is good i hope it horrifies the shit out of me not that smile oh. burn not that <laughs> not that one no it's, it's that that's more constipated they're more just villainous and it's going to be interesting to see some beautiful people smile horrifyingly so either way um until next time guys uh, as always stay bodacious and keep on writing absolutely everybody be good be safe and as always we'll catch y'all on the next one